Alrighty, in this video I'll be showing you how you can use the Notion formula to sort by earliest and latest date based on a date property and the set relationship. This will be part of the three minute formulas series where I quickly show you how to create an easy way to output something based on a said relationship. As you can see, there's two databases here, tasks and projects. Many tasks fit into a project, and in some cases, you might want to know when the earliest date of those tasks are and when the latest date of those tasks are. And so we'll be primarily relying on the map function, but we'll also be using the latest Notion formulas, dot notation, and other styling and formatting functions to sort of enhance the way we might be able to show this output. We'll start by using the map formula function. As you can see, when you type in the formulae, Notion will always give you some sort of reference to look at. In this case, we want to describe the relationship task, as you can see, based on the relation that we pre-configured. And then we also want to specify what we want to look at. In this case, because we are looking at the date of tasks, we'll just use, again, start with current dot and then we'll select the date property you can close that up now there's no errors the formula looks good because we haven't added any dates i'll just quickly do that so now that we've added dates this formula just extracts all the dates that are related to the project that are within the tasks so the reason why i wanted to highlight earliest and latest date was because we can take advantage of two of Notion's latest formula functions that I think we can all sort of use regardless of the property. In this case, we're just using date because we all know how to use dates. In this case, we are extracting an array of dates because of this map function. But we're going to add on a few more layers to this basic map function and use dot notation to quickly measure or output the earliest and latest dates related to this array. An array is basically, I think, interchangeable with a list, which just means a comma delimited matrix, which I think is another term that some people might use to describe lists. Again, earliest and latest, and just for sort of formatting and ease, I'm going to create a new line with shift enter. And I can do another one by doing shift enter. And you can also have that comment like we are we want to sort. The way we're going to be able to sort these dates is by using the dot notation dot and then sort and notice how we can open and close and we can just add that dot notation very easily to sort that list of dates so if we click down here it looks like that let's say if this was december 30th and we remove this notice how december 30th is before december 1st when we do the sort quickly orders it the array in a convenient manner so another way to sort of quickly navigate to either the earliest or latest date within the array is to think about it from an order standpoint. The earliest date based on the sort function is the first entry of the list, and then the latest date becomes the last entry of that array. And so when we combine the sort formula, and we also want to think about the order of that sorted list, we can think about how we want to specify the earliest and latest date. So in this case, a very convenient brand new formula function came with Notion Formulas 2.0 is the dot first function. And as soon as we do that, look what happens. Just like we wanted, it outputs the first entry within the list that we're pulling from that we just sorted. So now we have an output for the first or earliest date within the array that we're pulling from. So we can title this earliest date if we want. And then let's quickly duplicate this because we're gonna do something very similar for the latest date. So if the earliest date can be found through the first formula function, we can think inversely and say, if we do the last entry, that's gonna contain or output the last or latest date within the array. So we just quickly duplicate that formula, change that last formula function to last, and now we have two outputs specifying the earliest date within the ta related tasks for this project, and then the latest date specifying the dates that are related to the tasks. Obviously, it's nice now that we have two different formula outputs saying, hey, these are the earliest, these are the latest dates within these tasks. But what if we want to combine it into one formula property so that we don't have to show both of these? And instead, we have both of these within a single formula. We can do that. And we can do that by just control copying the formula, this property, and then adding a plus and then pasting that formula that we just copied. When we click on done, now we just have basically what look like two dates with no other context provided. In this sense, we can delete this other 
formula property if we'd like. And now we can just focus on the, this formula property. I think the next thing we can do to sort of enhance this formula output to output the earliest and latest date is to add some text and maybe some spacing and maybe some formatting to emphasize the earliest and latest dates. So something we can do is we can add a plus symbol in front of the map function. I'm going to create a few new lines. And then above that, I'm going to say earliest date in quotation marks. And notice how that output changes because I've added this text and combined it with this output. And this is, again, another feature change of Notion Formulas 2.0. So if you're used to Notion Formulas 1.0, this is a huge difference than what we used to have. Obviously, we can create that space by adding a space to the word. Maybe we have colon as well. So now we have earliest date, the date, and now we have that discrepancy right there in the middle. Let's just recreate that whole thing by adding another line break after that map function plus latest date, add that colon, add that space, and then we'll add that space before the latest so that there's a little bit of spacing there. So now when we click on done, we see this output. Now the problem with the way that this looks is everything is in one line of this formula property. And so what that means is if you were to shrink it, it doesn't look so great because everything is on a singular line. So if we were to use gallery view, for example, just showed that thing, it would look kind of like that. Even if we wrap all properties, it still kind of looks like that. It doesn't look so nice. And so the way with that we can sort of improve what we have currently is to create a line break, which is something I haven't introduced yet to the channel. I think it's a valuable one that we can add to any formula output. The way we can do that is we'll add another plus to indicate that addition of a new formula item. And we're going to do that by doing quotation backwards slash n close quotation mark. And notice how there are no errors after the closing of that quotation mark. And look what that looks like. So now, in a previous example, it was one line. Now, if you extend it, it appears in two separate lines because we've created that line break. The reason why it looks a little different there is because we created that space from previous iteration. So we'll just delete that space. And now they're in a straight line. This output looks much better and much neater now that we've created this line break with this formula function. And we have these outputs with text to emphasize that difference. The last layer that we can add, again, is a styling formula function in which maybe we want to emphasize the text. And maybe we want to make it bold, for example, so we can make the text stand out, for example, in a gallery view like this. So what we can do is we can start our cursor at the closing quotation mark of the text, click on Shift Enter, and then we can do dot style. And as you can see, when you click on dot style, it shows you a few of the things that you can do. And if we want to bold it, for example, we just do quotation B, quotation, close, and look at that difference, right? We just bolded earliest date using that dot notation and doing quotation B. That difference really stands out. Another thing we could also do is maybe underline it. So I think what we can also do is add a comma and do U, quotation mark, close. So now look at this. We have the underline appear simultaneously with the styling function. And all we had to do is add a comma. And what if we just did comma and typed in blue? Look how easy that was. And we can keep building on this formatting by adding in that comma and using these short codes as we see here and as I've sort of shown here. So we can just go to the text close of the quotation, do dot style, open quotes, B for example for bold, comma, same with U, close. Now we have bold underline. But now let's actually make it red. We'll just do R. R didn't work. We'll just fill it with red. And now we click on done. We have that up here just within this table view. So now if we go to the gallery view and we see that property, we can see the earliest date and the latest date highlight by color. You know, the more that you stuck around for this video, the more that you learned how you can sort of make everything that much better by adding new formatting elements, new line break elements, and a more commented or thoughtful approach by adding those line breaks early and sort of differentiating each step by adding it in a new line. Thanks for tuning in, like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.